since the last time, I suppose the second cohort uh, managed to make the slides on the shared notes. So I suppose I can continue here, but I will pass this parts quickly. So it's just like to remind you. By the way, can I start or should I wait? I don't know. I think that's all we have, right? <laughs> it's just the three of us. Yeah. Faribo, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. So should we start or should we continue? So let's continue. Continue. I mean, we can okay. start. Okay. So I was just saying that uh, since the last time we met, probably the second cohort uh, managed to put the slides on the shared notes. And we start with a meme here. <laughs> So we can die a hero and we can just uh, make it a, make it the event, make the time to event, or we can live long enough to become right censored until the movie ends maybe. So yeah, it's funny in my opinion, let's continue. Then it was, the, these were the examples like it might be, um uh, the starting time would be the surgery and the event would be the death or um yeah we can have a timeline and starting from the surgery uh the death would be the event and when the study time is over then the others would be um censored yeah after the study uh or uh, it might be the churn analysis. The customer would cancel the subscription for a service, and that would be the event. And machine malfunction would be the event in a time interval. And so the maximum duration of test would be the end of the, our study time. And from that point, it would be right sensing. So let's continue. And the, there will be other uh, other fields that we could use, uh, like survival analysis, like reliability, duration, event history analysis, or time to event analysis. Um, yeah, these we can assume like they are same thing, but with other names. And here there is a suggestion that we can also follow for survival analysis. Last time it was like, even though it's written one over eight, so it would be a eight chapter session, I don't know. Uh, but um, it was maybe the fourth, anti yeah, I mean, fourth of eight were uploaded. Uh, but I don't know, we can check it later. And types of censoring, generally we will use right censoring, but there are other types of censoring as well. The After right censoring, the most common ones are left censoring and interval censoring, but there are even more censoring types, uh, but we will use right censoring as I told you earlier. Mm, then, um, Second cohort uh, did it like a part of theory, a part of lab. And in the book also, probably you noticed that uh, the titles are going one, two, three, blah, 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 blah. And it starts like brain cancer data set or publication data set. So maybe it's better to uh, put some lab into the theory and then continue with the theory. Um, but yeah, this is how it is, but I don't know, yeah, here. So for the brain cancer data, I have also talked about it in, I mean, the last time we met. So we had like uh, six features, like sex diagnosis, location, Karnofsky index, uh, Two more volume, I suppose, I don't remember right now. And the 
type of uh, therapy or like method of uh, treatment and the status of the patients and then the time. Then we can see the summary and yeah, summary of the data. And then I suppose that's, hmm. Um, so status one indicates uncensored observation and status zero indicates a censored observation. Uh, it's also uh, the same, same thing, I suppose, in the book, like in the formulation, I suppose. I'm lost. I'll be back. Okay, yes. So if the event happens before the censoring, it's one, so uncensored is one and censored is zero. We can go back, uncensored is one. So the same, uh, same logic. And it says that 35 patients died before the end of the study. Then, and I suppose there were 88 patients. Sorry, any questions? Sorry. So there were 88 patients, and as I remember, 17 of them were censored. Uh, but uh, maybe some scientists directly accept 35 are censored. I'm not sure about the details right now. I mean, the last time we also uh, passed that part, and the uh, Kaplan Meyer survival curve, and this is a curve, or yeah, this is just a curve that we can like a qualitative thing. And it also always decreases because let's assume that this is the number of patients that we have. And this, this line is the time. And with the time, uh, each day, some, some of them dies and sometimes they don't die. If they don't die, we continue to have this much patients. We can assume this like that. And that's why the, when the event happens, um, the risk group decreases until the end of the timeline. And that's why the plot is always decreasing and the dashed lines are um, error, standard error curves. And we have done until this part. And starting from here, uh, still the same curve, but here we have two features shown on the same, not two features, one feature, but this is the categorical feature and uh, this is the sex or gender. And we have the pinkish one is female and the bluish one is male. And we, by just checking this, maybe we can say that for a while, the probability of males to die is higher than females. For a while we can say this, or can we say this? Since this is just uh, qualitative, we cannot be sure by just looking it. So we might need a, a formal test for it. So we can have a null hypothesis such as uh, both sexes, uh, I mean, there is no difference between these sexes to die earlier or to live longer. If there's an there's a difference or not, there, let's say that null hypothesis is there is no difference between uh, these categories. So we will have this kind of null hypothesis, and we will try to reject it. And for that, 
here we have also a sort of minor package for R. So this is a package for survival. There is also another package as I remember, but right now I'm not sure. Uh, maybe it was directly like survival is the name of the package. Uh, but here we see nearly the same plot here, but uh, along with the error bars. And again, the pinkish one is female and bluish one is male. And below we can see the number at risk. So at the beginning, there were 88 patients and 45 of them are female and 43 of them are male. But when the time passes, of course, some of them dies and we will have less patients. So what happens um, on the 20th month, let's say, uh, there are 26 females at risk and 22 males at risk. So they are decreasing again. This is still Kaplan-Meier uh, survival curve. And again, we cannot be sure that if they are, um, we cannot be sure that females would live longer or something like that. So we would have a log rank. So log rank comes here. So this is, we can say that this is our a uh, formal test uh, to compare two or more, um, like let's say categories we can compare in the data. Uh, and here we see our, like at the end of this code, we can see the p-value here, it is 0.2. So for the p-value, it is so high. So we would, I mean, to reject the null hypothesis, we would expect a much smaller value for p, such as like 0 0.05 or something like that. Uh, but since it is uh, 0 0.2, so it's not small enough, uh, there is, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So this indicates that uh, there is no evidence uh, of a difference in survival between two sexes. So even though here we see some difference, we cannot directly say that females can, uh, or males more likely to die earlier. We cannot say this kind of, uh, hypothesis. So the log rank test is the um, the test, the formal test to uh, say yes or no. Then let's continue. Then we come to the hazard function. And here we see that it's a conditional probability. So here it's uh, when the uh, event time is later than observed time or bigger than observed time, what is the probability of uh, event time to happen between observed time and only a little bit because the u is going to zero? Uh, between observed time and only a little bit later than observed time. And you, we have a division of this probability to you here. So this means that uh, since this probability here is divided to a time unit, uh, this is um, not a probability anymore because uh, let's assume that something over second, something over hour, something over month. So we can assume like kilometer over second, kilometers per second, kilometers per hour. 
So it feels like this is a rate from now on. It's not a probability. It is a rate when we are talking about hazard function. So um, it says that, why do we care about that? So, okay. Uh, the hazard function is referred to, a, referred to as conditional failure rate. So this is, as I said, it's a rate from now on. It's a conditional failure rate. Maybe it would be a better name for hazard function because it's more understandable in my opinion. And why do we care about that? Actually, it's just like an introduction because uh, what we mostly care would be a key approach for modeling survival data uh, as a function of covariates or regressors. And it will be the uh, Cox model, I suppose. Then let's continue. We will also have the cumulative hazard function. So um, here we have the cumulative hazard, to, I mean, time to cumulative hazard plot. And to me, it looks like the flipped version of kaplan meier because let's see. So it was something like this, or it was something like this. The blue was below with time and the pink was the upwards. And when we come here, to me, it looks like just flipped version of it. And what happens here, uh, the risk, uh, like since hazard was a failure rate, um, when we are talking about cumulative hazard, it's like, uh, the risk is accumulating. So we can say that the with the time, risk is accumulating. So let's assume that at this point, uh, males have a higher risk uh, to die at this point than females, maybe. I mean, it does not have to be the death. Maybe it's just the um, relapse a disease or maybe something else. But yeah. So this is the failure rate, cumulative failure rate, let's say. And until this point, it looks like the failure rate for males are higher than females. Looks like that. Okay. Then we will check proportional hazards. And from now on, here we have H0T. And this is the baseline. Again, it's, a, it's something conditional. And this Xi is uh, like a feature vector for an individual. And just like its name, from now on, we are talking about the proportional hazard. And since it is proportional, uh, relative risk does not depend on time. So from now on, this does not depend on time. So um, so the hazards are proportional, independent of time. So, but we are when some when something when, when two things are proportional, and when we plot them, we would see them they are. Uh, going on the, maybe I will do it like this. They are going parallel on the, uh, on the, I couldn't think of that. Okay, they will be parallel. They would not intercept at any place because they are proportional. If one is increasing, the other would also increase. If one is decreasing, the other would also decrease. And, what else? Okay, so for parametric proportional hazards model, um, we can use some specific 
distribution of distribution for the baseline survival or hazard function. And if we don't have a distribution assumption about the baseline functions, then we will have semi-parametric proportional hazards model, and we will call it as Cox uh, proportional hazards. And it's the name of its other. And then uh, regression models. So it is a regression model, essentially. And so investigating uh, survival time of patients and one or more predictor variables. So um, okay. Then, okay, for here, what do we have? So we have uh, this Cox pH, I mean Cox proportional hazards. This also comes from the serve minor package, as I know. And uh, we have the we fitted, I suppose, yes. And then um, out of 88, 35 are dead. And these are the p values. And since the p value is um, not small enough again, and when we check it, it's uh, we are comparing the sex on, um, yeah, effect of sex on the survival time. And it is like the same p values, p values are not small enough to reject the null hypothesis. So there is no clear evidence for a difference in survival between males and females. And then we can also uh, use this for all, use this um, model with all covariates. And for those, we can see that uh, here we see the um, probability of Z or yes, significance codes here. So this is like zero and you see E is going to E to the power of minus six. So it's something super small for the significant codes. And we can say that uh, this is so uh, effective to say that uh, it is significant. And what else? We also have Karnovsky index that we can say that uh, by using this um, so these are significant. Uh, I couldn't okay. Uh, Karnovsky index was a, a like a um, like an index starting from zero to hundred, and when it is hundred, it is like perfectly healthy, and when it is when it is going down and down, and it means that it is like that at some point. So it might be so much related with. Uh, survival time because it's directly related with being healthy and I suppose <clears throat> the this is the um, diagnosis yes this is the diagnosis of a G glioma and when we have this we can say that this is also uh, very related with survival time. What else? Here we also see the p values. I suppose we can continue. 
then mm, so this is the ggsurf plot again from the same package uh, but this is to visualize it and So with the all uh, all features, we can see the um, survival probability here. When we consider all of the features, we can have this kind of plot. And this part, I am not sure because uh to be honest i didn't understand this part but when we check uh this plot it is the uh cox proportional hazards model covariates coefficients estimates uh and when we check uh the most significant once we can see a Karnovsky index here, this point, and the other HG Pioma, and it's here. So, in so this is the estimate, and this is the term, and this is the zero. And here we have AIC and BIC, but I'm not sure about the, I mean, I cannot even relate Karnovsky index and AG glioma. So if you have an explanation for me, it would be so nice for me. If you don't have, I will just pass it. Sorry for that. I didn't understand this part. Uh, so you say you don't understand the uh, what is KI and what is the HG uh, gloma, or it's just the plot itself, like where these values come from? Yeah, it's just the plot itself. I mean, I know that. Karnovsky index and AG glioma are uh, important to say that the estimates are significant, but I cannot relate them in on this plot and I, I cannot understand what this plot is saying. That's my problem. It's just the, the same as the table that you showed in the previous slide, right? The regression model, the previous section. Should I go back? The previous section, 11.13. Mm -hmm. You scroll down. Hmm. The part where all the parameters are used, right? Please, please scroll up again. Isn't the values the same? Hmm. Then this, this but, one, isn't the coefficient the same as the pictures, the beta hat, the hat beta? See like this. Beta. Mm, zero eighteen. Yes, coefficient is our beta. Yes, you're right. Hmm. So this is. So let's check EG glioma, it's 2.15 and there it is. Okay, okay, okay. So this is the coefficient and the term and yeah, 
the recording to that. Yes, thank you. I just have one question is that the KI is a negative coefficient. So what does it mean? Like if it's negative means that if I have more KI means I have lesser risk of being dead. Uh, Mm. Add to a positive coefficient like the Hg uh glioma, which is so and this is the only negative one. Yeah, I'm so sure. if it's for the positive one means that if I have of that the very high is HG glioma, I have higher risk. But if it's a negative coefficient, does it mean that if I have a higher value of this KI, I have lesser risk instead of higher risk? So, uh, so it is that, right? Because I'm maybe it. I'm not so. Uh, I don't know to be honest. So that's why I was asking here, but it's so logical. But um, yeah, I don't know what to say to be honest from now on. <laughs> Should I continue? Yeah, yeah, I can just proceed. Okay. So I think so, yeah. Yeah, okay. Then, and then. So we were here. And there are Cox model assumptions. And so uh, there are different three types of diagnostics. Uh, we can test proportional hazards assumption and we can look for the outliers and we can check the non-linearity in the relationship between log hazards and the covariates. And for testing proportional hazard assumptions, um, so they use Scaled Schoenfeld residuals. Um, so again, they are independent of time. Hmm. Again, we have a function from Sir Minor packages, GG Cox, uh, ZP. H. So I don't know what's that for here, but proportional hazards. And then here we have the time on the x-axis and we have beta t for our different uh, features. And we can say that there is no um, pattern with time. So the middle line, it is generally around zero. So it is not like going up or down with time passes. Um, so the assumption of proportional hazards appears to be supported for the model covariate says. Okay, so I will continue. Then testing influential observations or uh, outliers here. Um, we have Geom Smooth. Let's go slowly. DF Beta and all of, um, features. Okay. Then again, we have um, 
It's written observation ID here. And this is the residuals on y-axis. And we see that uh, they are like the zero line here again. I suppose it's like the previous one, but a little bit different. And we can check the outliers by visualizing deviance residuals. Let's see. So this is like getting closer. So these are our observation IDs. So we have, we can assume that we have patients from one to 88 and the uh, residual values for um, each feature. And normalized transform of martingale residual. Hmm. So here, positive values correspond to individuals that died too soon. So, for example, let's see diagnosis HG glioma. So positive results, they died too soon. And negative results, it means that individual lived too long, these ones. I have a question, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, when you say positive value, is it above the blue line or above the red line? Uh, good point. I'm not sure about it right now, but uh, it is also like too soon or too long. So we could maybe talk about them like outliers um but i'm not sure about the red and blue like difference of red and blue so when we see that we have red line maybe it's just to show the zero and maybe the blue line is since it has a um it has like an error uh, yeah let's see this I suppose the red one is zero and the blue line is um, like showing us uh, the maybe, I would say that this would be like the area to the thing that should be happen like, but on the other hand, I would not, I would not, I wouldn't, um say that all these are outliers on the other hand the pattern looks fairly symmetric around zero so um i suppose this is our like distribution i'm not sure the distribution word is correct for this one but this is like the pattern of our samples here and we have our observations, each of them are, are our observations. And so this is like the, here we have all, um, all features separately, but here we have all of them together, like residuals, residuals type and all of them. And so we would say very large or small values are outliers, which are poorly predicted by model. But yeah, I suppose the one is the zero and the blue one is uh, according to our samples, it's like the... Um, like zero of our samples, maybe. I'm not sure. What would you say?
It's possible to check outliers by visualizing the deviance residuals. The deviance residual is a normalized transform of martingale residual. These residuals should be roughly symmetrically distributed about zero with a standard deviation of one. So in my opinion, the red was the normal zero, but the blue one is uh, like the refer like the reference of depending on our samples. But this is my opinion, I'm not sure about it. So what would you say? Maybe it's okay. And I would say that uh, since it says that uh, positive values, individual individuals that died too soon, but I don't think that the on only the positives we can say directly like died too soon. This is an outlier. I don't think that we can say, but maybe uh, and we can say that um, the observation IDs, they are not so away from our line here, like uh, more than two or three uh, standard deviation amount. They are still close, so we cannot observe them. Uh, we cannot uh, say that they are outli outliers because, yeah, we can say that this is our reference like our our exam our samples references and these are the error part or yeah standard deviation let's say and these ones so i want to say that we can assume this like a box plot like the mean and quartiles and we can make whiskers and we can say that out of the whiskers would be um, outliers, but they are not so far from those in my opinion. So we cannot say that this one is outlier, but it, maybe it is close to be an outlier. So then, uh, Again, I mean, we still say that positives are died earlier, negatives are died later <clears throat> or lived longer. But yeah. Then testing nonlinearity. Um, Again, martingale residuals against continuous covariates is a common approach. And nonlinearity is not an issue for categorical variables. So only we will see it for continuous variables to test nonlinearity. And martingale residuals near one represents individuals that died too soon and negative values corresponds to individuals that lived too long just like the positives and negatives here mm. then covariates must be numerical and continues so Here we see um, the martingale residuals for uh, the sex, and we can see that they are linear. Okay. Um, yeah, they are linear. So in this case, the covariates express the test, they are linear. Then uh, I suppose it was tumor volume. And when we 
plot the same for tumor, uh, tumor volume. Um, we can directly observe, we don't have a linear pattern for this one. Yeah. And then we have the meeting videos. Okay, that's it. And maybe I can um, this one. So um, I looked for some uh, data for the lab, but also, we have the publication data, and for publication data, uh, we can say that, I mean, of course, there are many um, features for publication data as well, but the positive result is important because we see that positive results uh, have an important effect on publication. So if you applied for a paper with positive results, you are more likely to be published. And yeah, so I'm, I suppose I'm just gonna share them. Um, so to be honest, I didn't have time to, yeah, I have, I mean, I researched, I made the research, but I didn't have time to apply them. And so maybe we can try to check the lab on the next week, if it is okay for you, or we can discuss with mailing as well. So that's it for this course. Do you have any questions that we can discuss together? Um, then I'm gonna stop sharing. Oh no. Yeah. yeah. Stop sharing first. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, it depends what you want to do next week because uh, if you were to do your lab, uh, then I have to have less time to have to present my part <laughs> unless uh, I can extend my weeks. <laughs> I can present like two weeks later. So but for me, it's fine. Uh, my fact flexible. So Okay, maybe I can check it again. I can check this part again. And if I, maybe I can just put things like quick, 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 and I can show what is important. I can focus on that, maybe show it. Or I, I mean, I don't know if I will have enough time again, but let's because, see. Because uh, from my understanding, the lab work already has the brain cancer data. So you already showed the brain cancer data. So yeah. you have to repeat that. Uh, I'm not sure about the other examples. Is it necessary? But I'll leave it to you to decide. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's not necessary. I was just uh, thinking that I didn't put enough time for um, from my own self, from my own daily life. I didn't put enough time for the lab, but it was like included in the chapter. So maybe it's not really required to check it. I don't know. So we can directly pass the uh, next chapter as well. What do you think? Uh, okay, so 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 next week I will just start my own chapter, right? I mean, uh, it's up okay. to you. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's really up to you. Yeah, okay. So uh, I'm stopping sharing and I'm going to share the links that I have. And for the next week, uh, I will check them, I mean, I will check the lab again, but uh, 
maximum 10 minutes that if I say something, I will use only the 10 minutes, okay? <laughs> Okay, okay, we shall see. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's only four of us to start with. Uh, yeah. So our timing is very flexible. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so we can decide our time as we want. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So I have no more questions to ask. Uh, so we have to ask whether if uh, Fabo has any other questions mm. to ask. Do you have questions, Fabo? That we can discuss maybe together. So maybe I will just assume that. Yeah, we are saying <laughs> silence means I <laughs> Okay, then maybe see you next week. Yeah, see you. Bye. Bye. And thank you. All right, thank you for everything. Um, yeah. Bye. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. See you next week. Thank you. See you.